Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, drat. More people bother you in the country than in the city. No, people have more time for it. Really, the world can be too much with you. Such a wonderful morning. We were going to be really alone all day. Mm, probably isn't anybody. Nobody doesn't ring like that. You go out and get rid of them, darling. You go out and get rid of them faster. Mm. Tucker here. I love that old man, but I'd love him more some other day. Hello? Any not in drown? No, uh, we're in here in the living room, Mr. Tucker. Come on in. Hello there, you young folks. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Tucker. how are you? I uh, don't want you two to think I was just passing by. I'm not the idly kind of man just to be dropping in. I like my privacy. I like others to respect it. Of course, that doesn't apply to good neighbors and young people like you. You'd be welcome to drop in on me any time you like. Well, we want you to feel that way about the Norton's place, too, Mr. But, Tucker. Uh, this morning, I dropped by a purpose. Uh, what be you going to do? What be we going to do about what? About your barn. About our barn? Yep. Well, we, uh... Well, I mean, the barn is just finished. And, uh, I want to thank you for all the help you were while I was in the hospital. Oh, shucks, twice nothing. I'd have did it for anybody, if I liked them well enough. But, uh, speaking about the barn, it's it's finished, but it's it's empty. Well, we've, we've got... Some... I know, I know, I know. You got my sow, Ruby, and one rooster. It can be heard bellering all over the county, but <laughs> you didn't build yourself that barn and put in... Fancy mail order stanchions for, for them. So, uh, for all practical purposes, your barn's empty. Well, I thought I'd wait a little while. You got a man, you got a barn, you got a yen to have a cow. When you can get a good cow, that's the time to get her. Time and cows wait for no man, like the old saying goes. <clears throat> the old saying goes, time and tide. Yes, for seafaring men. For farmers, it's time and cows. Now, <laughs> what kind of a cow you young folks aim to have yourself? Well, um, just a cow. Just a cow? Yep. It's no cow at all. Some of them ain't even good for hamburger. Oh, we don't want hamburger. We want milk. All of them give milk. Most of them give less than you think they're going to when you buy them. <laughs> Claudia, Mr. Tucker was asking what breed of cow we wanted. Oh, you mean black cows or brown cows? Black or brown or red or brindle or sky blue pink. <laughs> it ain't the color. It's the breed that counts. Guernsey, Holstein, Jersey, Brown Swiss, Ayrshire. It's an awful lot of names. I I, I think we really wanted uh, just a cow. <laughs> Mr. Tucker, I'm, I'm afraid Claudia is something of a city girl when it comes to cows. I agree with you. When it comes to cows, the first thing is to, to decide the breed. Now, I sort of thought that we'd you like to... You made that... an excellent choice, son, an excellent choice. Yep, an excellent choice. It's a fine breed, a fine breed adapted to our New England country, they be, just like it was bred first. Well, Good I... foragers, too, make the most milk out of the least feed to do. Mm. Lots of butter fat, none of your pale blue thin milk out of them. They're yeah. gentle, too, gentle, gentle, gentle. and intelligent. Yeah. Can't have too much intelligence in the cow you can't. No. Uh, Mr. Tucker, you've neglected to mention just what breed it is that I decided I want. Why, Jersey, son, Jersey. There ain't no other breed you'd want, no. Well, Jersey. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. I just thought it'd be nice to know. I, I grew up with Guernsey. And got them out of your system. Good. Now you want Jerseys. You made a good choice, son. It sort of looks as if the choice had been made for us, Mr. Tucker. Of course, if you hadn't wanted Jerseys, there wouldn't have been no point in my talking to you. But since it is Jerseys or nothing, I'll come to the hub of why I'm here. Uh, Mr. Tucker, you wouldn't misunderstand if I ask you one question, would you? Misunderstand? No. Fire away, son. Do you keep Jersey cows? What other kind would I be keeping? And you want to sell us one of yours, Mr. Tucker? Nothing would make David and me happier than to own one of your cows. Well, it's a happiness you'll have to defer, young lady. Sell my Susie or my nail? I'd sight sooner sell my sister, Delilah. <laughs> sight sooner. Yes, sir, of course. I, I could replace Susie or nail, and I couldn't replace my sister, Delilah, but... <laughs> don't know as I'd care to. <laughs> 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 she pesters the daylights out of me. Mr. Norton... 
As females go, cows is superior. <laughs> that is a philosophy which I hope David is never brought to. Women drive men to it if they're not smart. You, uh, you look smart, Mrs. Norton. Hope you are as smart as you look. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Tucker. That is one of the nicest compliments ever paid to me. And if a cow is that important, Mr. Tucker, I can see why the relationship of owning one, like matrimony, is not lightly to be entered upon. Son... There's a lot about cows you haven't learned yet. I suppose uh, you two think of cow when you think of her. The, the only thing you think of is milk, eh? Well, it's sort of the, the, the first thing you think of. Yep. Got a lot to learn. Without cows, the land ain't got no balance. Cows give a lot of, a lot besides milk. They give nice clover fields, pretty posies, and saves you from uh, buying uh, stuff. It's your own. It ain't the... Uh, Stuff you got to go off and buy at outrageous prices, you know. Well, frankly, I hadn't been thinking about cows from that angle. And that ain't all. You never got just one cow. They keep coming regular as clockwork. If you're lucky, and they ain't bull calves. You can count that clear profit just like dividend from an investment. It's always been a wonder to me a man would put his money into Wall Street when he can put it in a cow. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are varying opinions about the profits. Some people say oh, that you... some people say the cost more than you get from them. But uh, folks who say that ain't counting the value of health and human happiness. I suppose not. That's a sorry bookkeeping system that don't have columns for health and human happiness. Most of the real profits of life is in them two columns. Yes. Um, you, uh... Delicate question. You two youngs had your first fight yet? Well, as two normal young people, we... We have not. We have never had a fight. <laughs> Watch yourself. You'll be having your first fight about not having one. <laughs> <laughs> you mean if David and I have a fight, instead of turning to another woman for sympathy, I'll just go out to the barn? And nuzzle my head against our Jersey cow and say, my wife doesn't understand me. Her <laughs> words to that effect, Sean. Her words to that effect, yes. Here, there's peace. An understanding in a cow's eyes. There is. She, she's placid. She don't talk back. <clears throat> and she smells all sweet and clovery-like. And on a winter morning, her, her breath is all steamy-like. She never nags. Son, there, there's nothing like a cow. Your life ain't complete in, until you got a cow. You haven't by any chance got a particular cow without whom you, uh... Or should I say which? David's life won't be complete, have you, Mr. Tucker? Well, that I have, ma'am, that I have. She, she's right near home she is, too. Wouldn't even have to truck her. Just drive her across the pasture. Well, what are we waiting for? Where is this bovine paragon? Well, uh, don't know exactly where. She's somewhere in Matthew Warren's pasture lot this minute. Don't know where. Matthew Warren? You mean our neighbor? The same. Well, if Mr. Warren wants to sell a cow, why don't we go over and see it? Hold your horses, son. Hold your horses. Horses now, but we're not interested in horses. We just want a cow. Now, look here, young lady. Buying a cow's nothing to get fractious or comical about. You buy her, and she's yours. You live with her for the rest of your natural life. You but do. if Mr. Warren wants to sell a cow, it's only natural. There ain't we... nothing natural about it. And who said Matthew Warren wants to sell a cow? Well, you just got finished saying that he no wanted to. No such thing, I said. No such thing. Matthew Warren's going to sell a cow, and you're going to buy it. But Matthew Warren, he don't know nothing about it. What's more, he's got his mind made up. He, he, he ain't going to sell no cows. Well, and what's all the talking about? Cows. It all sounds very complicated. Of course it's complicated. Buying cows is always complicated. It, there'd be nothing simple about it. It's sort of, uh, well, it's sort of, uh, well, you could call it fine art. That's what it is. It, it's a fine art. This is all beyond me. And I must confess that I'm way behind you, Mr. Tucker. Now, look, you two, it's really simple. Really simple it is. If you was to go over to Warren and say, Mr. Warren, we want to buy one of your cows... The whole deal would be shut. Done and finished, she'd be. Why, if he wants to sell it... it, son, he, he don't want to sell no cow. Oh. So confounded simple, I don't know why you two can't get it through your heads. Perfectly simple to me. We want to buy a cow. Matthew Warren wants to sell a cow. Only Matthew Warren doesn't know he wants to sell a cow. Miss Norton, you're a country girl at heart. You understand me? Plain and right off. Good. Well, I'm just a city boy. Bring me in out of the dark, will you? Perfectly simple. Perfectly plain, simple. plain, plain as your nose on your face. Matthew Warren loves his cows. His jerseys are the finest in the state. Finest in the county, maybe. 
Take prizes every year at the Danbury Fair. Well, I'm with you that far. Well, he loves his jersey so much he don't like to sell them. Uh, Mr. Tucker, stop right, stop right there. Now, that's the point that I jumped off the track. Well, it's simple. Warren don't want to sell his cows. His herd grows. But th- this is the crux of the situation. His farm don't grow. So, there you are, Well, see? now, take me along just one step farther, Mr. Tucker, and I, I might know where I am. Oh, herd large, farm small. Wet weather good for hay, too much wet weather bad for hay. So, last evening, Matthew comes to me and says, Jared, I'm short of feed for this winter. You cut more hay than you need. Could I buy some of it, he says. And uh, you've got more than you need? You're dang tootin' I have. Never going to catch Jerry Tucker short of feed. No, so? sir. <laughs> so? So, so you got yourselves a chance to buy a good Jersey cow. <clears throat> Mr. Tucker, I think I'm off the track again. Yes, if, if you've got extra hay and a neighbor needs hay... You and Mr. Norton are my neighbors, too. Warren's got a lot of cows. Don't hurt him to have one less. Do you a lot of good to have to have one more. I'm just the, uh, the, uh... The Deus Ex Machina. Yes, yes, that's it. Yeah. The duck's in the machine that pulls the strings. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Now, <clears throat> if I was to advise you, which, which I ain't, I would advise you to let a couple of days pass. Let a couple of days yes. go by. Yes. And I'll dingle dangle Warren along and finally tell him he don't get none of my hay, see? He doesn't get any at all. Then along about Monday, he's in the right mood, the iron's hot. You buy yourselves a cow. Mm, it doesn't sound exactly honest to me. Well, it's cow trading that's as honest as most. I'll go along with you on Monday. And it, it, it sounds awfully complicated, too, Mr. Tucker. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Tucker. I just want to be sure that I have it straight. Now, we're going over and see Matthew Warren on Monday. Yes, and, and I'm... if he's in the right mood, and you haven't sold him any hay, well, then we can buy the cow. Is that oh, right? Oh, dang it all, Mr. and Mrs. Norton. Of course, this is all complicated. Yankee trading wouldn't be no fun if it wasn't complicated. Getting married sometimes complicated. It's fun, though. Ah, stop interrupting, girl. Having a baby sometimes complicated. But, uh, well, sometimes living's complicated. But buying a cow is always complicated. <laughs> it's fun, too. <laughs> As you stop in the food store or drug store for the family needs... You'll notice the red cooler that invites you to pause and refresh with ice cold Coca Cola. Step up, drop a nickel in the slot, and shop refreshed. That delicious refreshment will remind you to take a carton of Coke home for the family, too. Uh, hi there, Mr. King. Are you a Yankee? Am I a what? Them shooting words where I come from? Uh, might have known from your voice you wasn't no Yankee, but I'll wager you was born close to a farm. You ever done any cow trading, son? Now, you wouldn't be trying to sell me a cow, would you, Jared? You in the market for one? No. No, I guess you're not. But I've been having the time with these here Norton friends of yours. <laughs> They're babes in the woods. You still talking about cows? Well, they depend on me like I was a grandpa. Nothing to do, but I have to go along with them to buy a cow on Monday. If I don't go, Matthew Warren will skin the eyes off them. Is uh, Matthew Warren selling them a cow? Well, he is, but he don't know it yet. <laughs> well... So long, Jared. I have a notion, a Yankee notion, that is, that I'm going to see some Yankee trading on Monday. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes, and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. The parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree. The entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.